Hey everyone, it's Jay from the Games UK, and this is my Crash Bandicoot No Death Run Challenge. Now, just to give you guys a heads up, I'm about to explain something about this, but if you're not interested, then be sure to skip ahead to when I actually start the challenge. Okay, so before we actually get into it, I assume you're here and you're going to be listening to what I'm about to say. I just wanted to put this out here. Those of you who have been watching my streams will know I've been doing a Retro Wednesday where I do a challenge every other week and then I will either play a retro game that I've never played before you know because obviously everyone's seen everyone play Mario 3 I mean it's nothing interesting but maybe I'll play a game I haven't played before blind like Mega Man or maybe I'll showcase a, a mod or a hack of something but anyway my first challenge was the Crash Bandicoot No Death Run live stream and I've done it before, like tried to do it before as a mess around and I didn't really take it too seriously but I didn't do it so it was kind of just like well okay I'm actually going to do this or, or am I just going to say I'm going to do it and then just die and then just be like nah I'm not going to do it you know it's just, just kind of like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of misleading you know so I thought it was like well no I actually do want to do this um, so I eventually picked it up again, tried again and the first stream was a fail okay never mind you know, pick yourself up, try again. So I actually managed to practice and pretty much all of my runs apart from one, my practice run, I uh, didn't die once. I was confident, I was ready to go. And then I just kind of lost it. I tried and I failed and the more I did it, the worse I got. I got frustrated, I got nervous, I got annoyed with myself. And honestly embarrassed. I was embarrassed because I was actually going and being serious this time, trying to beat it. Still having fun, but at the same time it's just like, well, I keep dying. I keep restarting. I have people watching me and they expect to be here seeing me doing this death, no death run. And all I do is keep dying, keep failing, and keep doing it again. And honestly I just kept getting frustrated. I was like, I don't want to do this again. I don't want to keep restarting and doing all this again. It takes so long. It's wasting so much time. And I thought to myself, why can't I do it? Am I really that nervous that people are watching me that I just can't concentrate? And honestly, yes, I kind of partly think that's the case. Crash Bandicoot is a difficult game. I don't care what you say. I don't care if you think you're the bee's knees. I don't care if uh, you're a queen of some unknown country that I don't know about. <laughs> the point is, right, is that a lot of people will say it's hard. It's a difficult game even, you know, to this day. And I've played this game <laughs> no pun intended, but to death. Uh, but that doesn't mean I've been doing no death runs all the time. No. <laughs> I die a lot every time I play the game. I don't die as much, but I probably die maybe two or three times. Twice if I'm lucky. But like, you know what, you know what I mean? It's, uh, I don't go in and be like, okay, I'm going to do a no death run. I wanted to do the challenge because I thought, hey, it'd be a fun challenge. And it could also be possibly entertaining if I do fail maybe once or twice, I don't know. Get some close calls, things like that. But no, I was, I was really I was really upset with that stream. I was really angry, honestly, and upset um, and frustrated. And I just thought to myself, like, I don't even want this stream. I deleted it. In case anyone was wondering, someone might have thought, oh, hey, where's that stream gone? I deleted it. Uh, well, it's probably still on Twitch, but I deleted it from YouTube. I was so annoyed with myself that I deleted it. Uh, I was upset. And um, so I pretty much was like, okay, well, whatever. Uh, what I decided to do, I thought, well, if I really can't do it, if I'm really so nervous, if this challenge is too much for me to do live stream, then I'm just going to have to try and record it and like as in post type of thing and see how we go. And I've managed to done it. I managed to done it. I, ma I managed to do it. That's essentially what this video is. This is a pre-recorded, which I'll probably main, sort of get into it when we actually get started. Uh, this is pre-recorded, and I figured I would do a bit of commentary over it. Nothing too major. So I do apologise if you don't want any commentary. I guess mute, mute the video um, so you don't don't hear me. Uh, but I'll just be talking about a, talking about a little bit of what I was doing. Nothing, that's nothing too drastic or anything. Um, so that's essentially what I'm going to be doing. It's all this is all in one sitting, everything. But I just want to put it out there in case anyone uh, who's been supporting the channel is just interested, and whoever's watching the live stream might might have popped in and be like, "Yeah, what happened to that?" I'm like, "Yeah, well, this is what happened." So unfortunately, 
I won't be doing a live stream anytime soon of this. This is kind of like the replace. Ooh, excuse me. This is kind of like the replacement. Essentially, this is going to be a pre-recorded thing. Maybe I'll do it one day in the future, but I just couldn't. I re I realized myself. I was like, I guess I can't do it. I'm too nervous. I can't. I can't seem to relax. Um, so in future challenge streams, I think I need to do something that's a bit more realistic. Maybe not always do no death runs, depending. Like I'd have to be really, really super confident, I guess, that I that I could concentrate, but also like you know, listen to you guys. Well, listen to you guys. What look, you know, look at the chat and stuff. Obviously, you don't look at the chat all the time. You pay attention, but you you, you get what I'm saying. Um, not something. That's clearly too much for me, which again, I, I didn't I didn't even think, I just thought, no, I could do it, I've done it before, but I guess it's different when you have people watching you, I suppose, the pressure is a little bit on. But yeah, I, I'm sorry, I really wanted to do it, and I just wanted to put this message out there, because I was really bummed out about it, I was, you know, it is what it is, but it's here, it's pre-recorded, so without further ado, let's get on with the challenge. Okay, so let's get on with the challenge. I'm going to be doing a bit of post commentary, nothing too special. If you don't want to listen to my nonsense, just mute me. Um, I do apologise. But anyway, let's get into Insanity Beach. So I'm actually watching this right now, my pre recording. And uh, yeah, I had a few failed runs that I won't be showing off, but uh, man, I had some close, some close quarter ones, and every time I've tried to do this, I've died at different levels, and, they are, and I don't want to say ironically, but well, more annoyingly, I've like gotten really far at like the third island, and then I would essentially fail, and then when I try again, I would like die really early, and I'm thinking to myself, come on man, I got to the third island, and now I die like really early? <sighs> okay, <laughs> that's annoying. Of course, the Beach isn't too hard. This is not a 100% run, so in case anyone is wondering, you can probably tell because I completely missed all these boxes as you're about to see right here. Now, this is quite long in one setting. The video will be quite long, so I may possibly either fast forward or skip the, uh, the box sequence just to cut down a bit of time. I'm sure someone will be out there and be like, oh, I edited the video, I didn't do it, in, do it in one setting. And if you want to believe that, that's absolutely fine. But I just figured, well, it, the video is like an hour long and I'm like, well, it's not a live stream, but I am doing this in one setting. So I don't know, we'll see. We'll see, I might leave it in, I might not. But it's an hour, I'm gonna have to sit here and watch this, uh, so. Oh, well, hopefully you enjoy it and uh, I guess, in case anyone is, is interested, uh, be sure to follow us on Twitch if you want to join uh, me live on Wednesday for Retro Wednesdays, whether it's to watch me you know, play a blind game, mod hack, or to do one of the uh, challenges. And to help me out, because I don't always know the challenges I'm going to do, um, if you've got any ideas, any challenger ideas, of course, I, don't, I might not necessarily have the game, but I guess just ask. And uh, I'll be able to let you know if I have the game or not. Um, but uh, pretty much, if it's Sega Mega Drive, I have it. If it's like N64, I probably don't. Well, actually, if it's, if it's Nintendo in general, I probably don't have it. Unless it's GameCube, I might have it. But So anything Nintendo related, I, I, like, I literally don't have, unfortunately. Uh, so it would probably be either Sega or PlayStation, honestly. Which doesn't leave too much. Uh, but if there is a challenge idea you want uh, me to possibly try, then uh, be sure to tweet me at hashtag GBUK Wednesdays on Twitter. It's just easier for me to do that. I can check and see what you're putting out there. As I'm recording this, the next challenge I've already got planned thanks to uh, Metal Dope, uh, who was uh, watching my Spyro streams uh, when I did Spyrofon, is ironically another Spyro, <laughs> Spyro stream. Um, it's going to be a uh, no sparks run, of course, uh, by the time you're watching this, the stream might have already been done, but I've pre-recorded this and I just haven't uploaded it yet, so. What 
I'm, I'm not sure if I've planned anything after Spyro yet. Um, but that's why I like to say, if you guys want to see other challenges, if you like this idea of Retro Wednesdays, you know, challenges, or just, like I say, you just want to send me maybe a fun mod or a hack of Sonic or something. You know, I play Sonic Hacks all the time. Well, no, I don't play Sonic Hacks all the time like I used to, but I, I, I used to play Sonic Hacks. You know, I'm part of the hacking community. I used to be. I'm not really much anymore. I don't have the time for it. But, um, uh, then, uh, yeah, leave a like. And uh, subscribe if you like the idea. They're, they're, this is basically just dedicated to anything retro. I know the reason why I did this is because I'm just a big retro fan. I say more Sega and PlayStation because I never grew up with Nintendo. Um, but yeah, I'm a big fan of those games. I most of the time kind of prefer to go back to them. And I mean, I would arguably say PS2 is kind of retro now. It's getting there, um, especially when PS5 is PS5 becomes a thing. Uh, I, you know, it pretty much will be, but yeah, like I'm definitely for the older games more. I've played newer games before, of course. I have a PlayStation Four, but um, I don't know. The old games left a better impression. New games don't really leave as much as an impression. Not as good, I don't think. Maybe it's nostalgia. I don't know, but um, that's why I want to do these things. It's kind of like I can just chill out and play some retro games and maybe do a fun challenge or two for some of my favorite games that I've played to death, you know? I'm sure there's maybe like a Sonic 3 and Knuckles challenge maybe I can do or something like that, I don't know, or Sonic 2. Not too sure what. Um, apart from like speed running because I think I already tried that, but uh, yeah, just like a little fun idea, you know? And if there's any, uh, let's say, retro people out there relating, then uh, this might interest you. As a boulder dash done anyway. Of course, I was trying to do the old zigzag thing, and in case you guys don't know, zigzagging is a speedrunning technique that uh, some people told me about before. I apologies for names, but uh, are, like I've never seen them before, and they only came in like my stream once. So I mean, apologies for forgetting your name, but I've like I've only seen you once, and that was it. So. The, Chances are they're probably not even watching the video anyway. Um, they, they, they probably just came in because it was Crash and they're a fan of Crash. But um, either way, uh, someone or some people told me about the zigzagging. And I haven't quite got it down pat, but in this game there's no like slide jump like Crash 2 or 3. Uh, there's no special abilities. You only jump and you spin. That is your, that is your movement, um, you know. Crash has a decent running speed of, in, like in general. You do, you do go a bit faster, I think, with uh, Invincibility from Aku Aku. Uh, and I want to say in this game, if you spin, you do get a little bit of a boost of speed. A little bit. It's not, like, super amazing. But zigzagging is basically you would wiggle... You, you would wiggle uh, the directional stick or the uh, direction pads. In my case, I use the uh, directional buttons, I should say. Um, I've always used directional buttons for Crash Bandicoot. Really, or at least Crash Bandicoot one anyway. You would wiggle them the opposite direction to what you're. Well, the 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 opposite button, I should say. So in this case, if you're doing the boulder level and you're running away, then either if you're running away or towards, you would actually when you jump, you would wiggle left and right because you're on a three D plane, right? Um, and if you're on the side, then you wiggle up and down. And essentially, by wiggling uh, left and right. You're actually gaining a little bit of speed. Um, it's actually it's kind of weird, but it's kind of like it's kind of like faster. It gives you a slight faster movement speed by by like turning. But you turn you turn so fast that that actually makes you move faster in the air. Um, and if you get it down pat, you can go pretty fast, and you can outrun the the uh, the boulder very fast. And you can also do this in other levels. But I'm no speed I'm no scrub. But I can't help but do that in the boulder one just for fun. It's just something I like to do. Um, but I haven't really got it down pat. But that's a speed run and technique. You don't have to do that, obviously. I just felt like doing it. I'll probably do it in the uh, in the next boulder level as well. But I think it's just called boulders. That was a bit bad on my part there, but that's fine. Honestly, I would say, for me, sometimes getting invincibility kind of hurt me. Because the problem, the problem with invincibility in this game, that the insane, the insane trilogy changed, was that if you got invincibility and you got hit by something that could not be destroyed, like say an obstacle, like like those Rolling Stones right there, right? Um, well, 
Aku Aku would kind of have like a violent reaction. That's the best way to describe it. Um, like he'd be like, oh, 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 and you'd get knocked back. And obviously the problem is, the last thing you want in a game where it's full of bottomless pits everywhere is not back when you're trying to make a jump over a bottomless pit because obviously then you go flying and you you might fall into the pit because now you've gotten that extra knockback and you don't know where you're going, you're trying to control yourself. Um, it kind of throws you off, so sometimes I, I don't actually want to go for invincibility or I just kind of wait until it ends because I'm like, I don't want to risk it, you know, I feel... Uh, more comfortable and plus I do think that again it makes you a bit faster so for levels like Road to Nowhere when I'm trying to be more precise I'm like I don't want to go too fast I'd actually prefer to be safe and precise and get to the end and then we're good so of course when you uh, beat a boss like I bought, uh, beat uh, drop a drop, Jabu Jabu I mean Papu Papu <laughs> um, you get uh, two masks automatically, but you lose them immediately anyway. Uh, and when you do a level like Hogwild, because there's only these two types of level. Well, there's this one and the the one you unlock. But because this is 100%, I'm not doing technically all the levels. There's two secret levels. But this is a normal run, so I'm doing the normal levels anyway. Um, but uh, obviously no masks here. So you have to regain the masks when you go back to normal levels. Uh, that's the only thing. But when you're in boss fights, you lose them. So you can pretty much just use them up if you want to because you'll lose them anyway. Uh, and I actually do that for Ripper Roo again. It's another little like speed running trick that you can do. Which we'll get to that. We're kind of close. We're doing Hogwild. Hogwild's not too bad. Uh, fun fact in case anyone didn't know. When I first live streamed Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. For some reason this level was really hard. Right at the end that last like hog that was being spun around right. For some reason, the hip box, the hip hip box, the hip box on that, I think, is very picky. Like I would jump in the same way I would in the original game, and I would still fall off. It's like the hip box is bigger than the actual hog itself. So when you jump over it, it's like you're touching the air. You're falling like Crash is being knocked over the hog by nothing. It's just air, but it's like there's a square around the hip box, right? And the square is just bigger, and because you can't see it, you just think, well, I'm above the hog, I'm avoiding it. Nope. That's what it felt like anyway. Uh, and I'm, I got I wasn't the only one, because apparently a lot of people had that same problem. I don't know what it was. I eventually managed to do it. You, you had to do it in a different way. You couldn't do it the same way as the original, clearly. It was, it was, you had to jump specifically in a specific way. Whereas in this game, as long as you're high enough, you should be fine. I've never had any problems. Um, also, this level, well, both of these, Great Gate and this one, uh, the flame hitboxes for Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy are kind of off as well. Um, it was kind of a bit of a godsend to come back to this, and I was like, oh yeah, I'd have to deal with those stupid hitboxes. <laughs> Collision boxes or whatever. Um, well, in this case, I think it's hitboxes between Crash and the flames. But, um... Yeah, like, I don't have to deal with it, but thank God. <laughs> thank God. Now, I didn't have too much trouble with Native Fortress. Uh, at times I have, but in this case, it wasn't too bad. Um, one of the things I noticed is that sometimes rushing these levels actually helped me. Um, because I kind of know the layout, sometimes it actually helps me to rush the level as opposed to uh, being more cautious because sometimes being cautious I actually get really nervous and then I'm like oh am I gonna make the jump correctly whereas sometimes I'll just be like nah I'll just go in and I can roughly tell how far he's going to jump or how far he's not going to jump and sometimes it benefits me it depends it really depends uh, but like Road to Nowhere and High Road I kind of had that thing where I would at times, I would just skip a bunch of uh, broken bridges or, or, you know, platforms on the bridges where the bridges are broken. Um, sometimes I would just skip some because it's actually easier. So I'd just rush through. It kind of depends, really. There's actually an example here with Nathan Fortress right at the end. There's like three, uh, three flames that you have to do. I think it's right here. No, it's after this one. It's actually easier to try to outrun the flames as opposed to... Because you're supposed to go behind the background. But I do this. 
and you can just make it if you're quick enough. And I find that a lot easier than going behind the background and hiding and then coming out. So that's what I do. I don't think I'm getting 99 lives at the end of this though, because I kind of just ignore lives. Oh! <laughs> Rip! But I'm not dead, but... <laughs> oh, I don't know what I was doing here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You have to do this again, mate. <laughs> That was a fail. I don't have my soundboard on, so no soundboard sounds. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, well, at least, at least I couldn't die there, I suppose. There you go. Of course, that indicates that uh, you have not died once. Granted, you could also not get a checkpoint to start at the beginning, and it would also kind of count as a oh hey, you haven't died. But in this case, I did it one sitting and I didn't die, so. But that's Island 1 done. So we're about to move on to Island 2. Which I would say arguably the most difficult. It's kind of like a cross between probably Road to Nowhere. Road to Nowhere and um, Lost City and I guess Sunset Vista. It's kind of weird. I never felt Lost City was too bad. I always felt like Sunset Vista was worse. And I probably still do. But for some reason, when it came to this no death run, I felt like Lost City gave me more trouble, and I don't know why. A bit more trouble. And I didn't find Sunset Vista as bad as I normally do. It's kind of weird. Wait for that monkey to come back, spin him. Kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know what it is. If not, probably Road to Nowhere. Um, the Lost... not Lost City. The, uh, the, uh, the Temple? Temple Ruins? Can be a bit troubling. But I normally don't have too much trouble. Normally. Normally. <laughs> I'd like to think I've... Mm, nah, I was going to say 80% 80, 80 get the death, like the death perception correctly when jumping on the platforms in Temple Ruins. Um, but yeah, I guess it just depends. I actually didn't need to jump there. I guess I just got nervous. I, I could literally just walk along the, or run along the the the, the, the lily pads. The lily pads. <laughs> yes. YouTube's already going to demonetize us anyway. None of them matters because um, can't demonetize what's not partnered. I suppose. I actually can't remember how many lines I got at the end. I don't know. We'll find out. Just waiting for the right time to jump here. There we go. May do 100% in the future, who knows, but it wouldn't be a live stream if I can't even do the live stream for long run. <laughs> it would be a recording again. I missed 10, that wasn't too bad. Okay, it's time for Ripperoo. I'm actually cold, but I've turned the heater off because otherwise it picks up on the camera, so I have to sit in coldness. Uh, I guess I could like maybe put my jumper on. I do have a jumper at least to, to put on. Alright, so I try and set this one. And uh, I kind of messed up there. But normally I would set that up. And then uh, we'd be good. For the first one anyway. There we go. That's what I was going to do the first time. That counts. And then what you can do is you can just spin. Because you have an Aku Aku, right? You can spin because you have an Aku Aku. And then if you time it correctly, you can actually do that a lot sooner, but yeah. If you've got Aku Aku, you might as well use it. You just have to stand at the edge so the Aku Aku doesn't, you know, the knockback doesn't knock you into the water. Um, that's a quick way of taking down Rapuru. I just like to do that. Get him out of the way, you know. Alright, now it's time for the Lost City, which kind of sometimes gives me trouble. I don't know why. I feel like it shouldn't, but it sometimes does. But, you know, I did, it didn't in this case, so that's good. Trying to think what's the worst thing in this. I can read the bats. The bats are annoying. They're not as big as the Insane Trilogy, but I don't even think the hitboxes are even that big. I just think they they look enormous in the Insane Trilogy version. Um. Now I think about it, it might even be harder to do this for the Insane Trilogy version because of how that plays compared to this game. That was risky. I lost my Aku Aku there. That was... 
Yeah, well, I don't like the bats. <laughs> Definitely don't like the bats. Annoying. Okay, dodge that dude. Oh, I just went for it. I just went for it, and you got this chameleon dude. I don't know if it's chameleon, some sort of lizard. There we go, take out the red ones. The red ones follow you, um, which is like a little bit of a problem, but it's not too bad. The only thing I worry about there is just like trying not to get knocked off by jumping on it, uh, jumping on that one there, but should be alright. Just gotta wait for these quick platforms to come along and then go. Now if you're really ballsy, you can uh, kind of go a bit earlier and jump around them, but Considering how much luck I've been getting, I, I didn't want to risk it, so I played it safe, safe and wait. And uh, speedrunners will also know that there's a there's like a trick where you can get pushed onto a different part of the plane, and if you do it correctly, you can jump all the way up to the top, of, like off off camera, and you can just like walk through the rest of the level. I think you can do that also in um, in Lost City as well. It's really cool. I have no idea how you do it, but it looks really cool. It looks really cool. Every time I see it, I'm like, dude, that's that's really cool. I don't actually know if you can do it in the Insane Trilogy. Maybe? Maybe not? Then again, it's again, it's a recreation, and I feel like since that's a bug, that probably wouldn't have been recreated. So I don't actually know. I do believe that they ran Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. I believe in uh, the uh, Awesome Games Done Quick that it was re done recently. I think it was Awesome Games Done Quick, right? But I, I haven't watched it, unfortunately. But that's Lost City, anyway. We haven't quite got to the hard, the harder one. Uh, Sunset Vista. How many boxes? Seventeen. Okay. Now it's time for Temple Ruins. Well, it's kind of cool that that's something I also didn't know is that your spin, I'm not sure if it's in all the games, it might be in all the games, but uh, the spin is, has got like a bit of invisibility frame. So you know those, uh, those spheres that come out? You can actually spin through them and you won't get touched. It's kind of cool. I didn't know that. I was like, huh, the more you know, you know, when he gets to speedrunning, I was just like, I was looking up stuff because I, I have fun watching speedrunners, but I know I can never do half that stuff. I don't have the dedication to keep playing the game over and over and over and over and over again and learning all these tactics. And I'm not exactly, I wouldn't say I'm a super duper fast learner. It kind of depends on what it is, I guess, but if it's like technology, I'd like to think I'm a pretty fast learner, IT, all that jazz. I've always been kind of interested in computers. Video games is kind of up, up up there, but when it comes to learning tricks, especially when it's very complicated tricks, sometimes I get lucky though. <laughs> sometimes I just end up doing something and I'm like, how the hell did I do that? But yeah, you can spin through the spears. So it's just kind of cool. Now the bats here aren't nearly as bad in my opinion. Although I have to kind of wait for them to go through now so I can, uh, I should have went, but I guess I hesitated, I got scared there. I don't need to get to the left there, because it's just boxes, so. There we go. Oh, I could have gone there. Probably just want to play it safe. Spider! Eh, nothing to worry about. Dead at least the problems in this. There we go, nice. And strangely enough, in I guess it depends on the level, but like I would say sometimes Island 2 is harder than Island 3 for me. At least what I've noticed by doing this run is that 
when I get to item three, I feel all right. I mean, granted, there are hard devils like Slippery Climb. Yeah, I wasn't too worried. Oh my lord, I probably should have died there, those damn bats. God damn, I forgot about that. <laughs> Jesus, right at the last minute they came out. If I hadn't, if I hadn't had an Aku Aku, I definitely would have died. I thought I died there then for a second. I was like, wait, did I, did I, did I not check this video properly? It's like, no, no, 37 boxes. It's like, damn. I managed to, to, to adjust myself and save myself. Jesus. God, all right, it's time for Rotor Nowhere. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Danger. Yeah. This is a dangerous road. Now, you can run on the ropes, but I'm not confident enough to do that in a no-death run. Because um, you do have to jump off and then go on. I mean, granted, I do feel like it's easier to do it in this than in St. Trilogy. Definitely, in my opinion. But no, I, 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 I could have done that. And if I was more confident and I could do it, then sure, it would save me a lot of time. And I wouldn't have to worry about the hogs or anything. Or the bridge being broken. But, but no, I was like, no, I'm going to do this legit. I don't know, someone, I'm sure someone would class that as cheating. They'd be like, no, you're cheating. I think a lot of people were saying that before when they were like doing the relics for this. They were like, you're using the ropes, you're cheating. I mean, yes and no, because... Uh, I mean, the fact that... They, uh, the fact that Activision kind of left that in for the Insane Trilogy kind of says to me that, oh, hey, that's an option, you can do that. Um, you know. And for the longest time, I was convinced that you had to do, you had to run on the ropes to get the platinum. But I think I saw someone do it. Like, you can, you can do it. You don't have to run on the ropes. It's possible. I saw someone do it. I was like, oh, you can do it. I was like, oh. Like, you got to get the timing down, far, like, really fast and stuff, so. That's probably the most toughest part for me. That section there, with the slippery slopes and the, uh, the hog. They can clearly just levitate above the ground. <laughs> Like, what is this nonsense? It's a super hog. And then after that, it's plain sailing, really. And I would even arguably say that high road is easier. Because all I have to do is jump on the, uh, the turtles. Use the turtles to bounce. And I don't even find that difficult. So I would say road to nowhere, arguably, is easier for me. For me, when I'm not going for 100% anyway. If I'm going for 100%, that's a different thing. Because you kind of have to go backwards and get some crates and stuff like that. Now we get a bit of a breather, what I consider a breather anyways, Boulder Dash. Of course I could do the zigzaggy zoo if I want to, I ignored that life, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Normally I do like beat Crash Bandicoot 100%, so it does feel kind of weird not throwing it. But I was like, look, baby steps, okay, baby steps. If I can get this down pat, you never know, I might do it in the future. Especially if you guys like the idea, um, then who knows, I may do this in the future. Uh, if if uh, people support all that jazz. And I remember that these used to give me so much trouble, they don't anymore. Uh, even if I get like stopped, if I make a mistake, I can normally rectify myself by, um, you know, using the zigzag just to make sure that the ball didn't catch up to me. Yeah, I think I'm doing that there a little bit. It's when you jump. You jump and then you, uh, you waggle the directions, the directional buttons, and then you're good. You just got to do it as fast as you can. And the faster you do it, the, uh, the faster you move. So, in the air, of course. It pushes you forward. Yeah, I made a mistake there, but I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll still outrun the boulder. And there we go. Victory. Let's go, Waku Waku. Okay, quick edit there, whether you believe me or not. But um, my uh, camera decided to die, even though it was at max battery. Yeah. 
Funny how it does that with me. <laughs> Technology and me just don't go. Even though uh, I used to be a technician, um, at least in terms of like PCs anyway. Whenever I try to do live streams or recordings, they did, something tends to go wrong and I have to do something to try and fix it. And in this case, I just had to quickly plug in my charger. But I thought at first I ran out of space and then I realized the camera was off and I was like, you can't be serious. It was max battery, literally. Like it's only been, what, uh, half an hour. Like, is it really gone in half an hour? Is it that bad of a battery? Uh, I guess so, I don't know. <laughs> I hope that doesn't have to be replaced. I might, it might have to be. It's like as bad as my laptop battery used to be. So uh, I mean, I can't use my laptop anymore, unfortunately. Uh, I need to get a new one when I when I actually uh, get rich, which is which will be never unless I uh, do the lottery and get lucky. But I don't do the lottery anymore. But anyway, we are in Santa Vista, and there's a hidden mask there, and I started to get. Invisibility. Honestly, it didn't really make too much of a difference. It really helped me here, but I just did it just because. <laughs> the Ooga Booga. Why not? Because you don't want to jump on the flame because, you know, Aku Aku will have that violent reaction. Oh, 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 oh. And just send you flying. and you're like, okay, okay. He's invincible. It doesn't do you any damage, but he still just kind of has a violent re reaction, you know. I mean, it's a, it's a mask. I mean, it wouldn't mask, right? Like. Fire bad, <laughs> even if it does make Crash Invincible. Fire bad. But um, that wasn't the case. I'm, I, I, well, I don't know about the flames, but they changed that in the same trilogy. With like certain objects, you don't get knocked back. So I think you can just go straight through it, <laughs> like clip through it. You don't get affected by it, um, which I, I could be on fine with. So they might have done that as well for like speed running purposes. Uh, you know, so you can just get Aku Aku Mask because, like, in 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 the Insane Trilogy version, you pretty much have to get invisibility in order to get like platinum regs. I think, oh, I'm sure it's possible to do it without it, but I bet it make you ten times harder to do it. So they kind of you know imply to you that here you go, you need invisibility here, so to plow through everything. Especially this level, I think there was more. More masks than ever, because there's actually quite a few masks in this level. Um, so you're guaranteed, I think even if you don't have Aki Waki when going in here, you're guaranteed to get him. Uh, unless you lose a mask soon than later. But I think there's three masks in this. Only three. Um, but there's more in the Insane Trilogy when you do the Platinum Relic. Well, when you do the Relic, the Time Travel, I should say. For that. There's another one. No, wait, no. There's actually four, I think. There's the hidden one. There's that one. There's the one we got uh, uh, down the below. There's another box coming up. So I think there's four. So many in this. I'm not sure why. I don't feel like this is the best level for it, personally. But Well, I mean, maybe it's just giving you Aku Aku just to protect you. But if you get knocked off the edge, Aku Aku can't save you. He can't make you fly, I'm afraid. <laughs> Unless it's uh, Crash Team Racing. <laughs> and then he pulls you back on the track. Ignoring the Cortex heads. Yeah, look, there's another one. Yeah, I'm pretty certain this is the last one. There might be another one, but I think this is the last one. Right, I don't get all the boxes, so I could be missing one, but... Then after this, we've just got Koala Kong, which is... Well, I like to call him Koala Kong. Because <laughs> that's what I always called him for some reason. Um... I guess I got worried here. Well, I guess I wasn't sure what, 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 when I should go. You're supposed to go now. I could have gone earlier, but oh well. I think I know why though. So I think it's because one of the live streams I tried to do this, I rushed in and just, I, I was just probably being safe, I guess. I guess. I say, I recorded this and then I, and then I did, I'm doing the, uh, the video audio, um, you know, afterwards. I think it's like a week or so, something like that. So I'm trying to, I can sort of vaguely remember what I was doing, but at the same time, I'm sort of thinking, mm, what was I doing here? I was probably just waiting, being patient, you know, playing it safe. I don't blame myself considering how unlucky I've been. <laughs>
And there we have it. That sunset vista done. Fifteen boxes. All right. It's time to do with Cloud Kong. Not really hard at all. The boss fights are the last thing I worry about in this game. That's for sure. <laughs> so we should be good. We should be fine. Let's go, Mr. Cola. Of course, you can spin the rocks. Well, some pe I, I know some people didn't know that. I've heard in the past that people have said, oh, I've always just jumped, or jumped and avoided them. You can do that. You can jump and avoid them, or you can spin them. I think I remember seeing someone do it. I want to say, you know what it was? I think one of the demos has the AI play against Koala Kong, and I think he spins the rocks, and I think that's how I figured it out. So when I came to the boss fight, I was like, oh yeah, the, the demo showed us spinning the rocks as opposed to avoiding the rocks. So I, I knew to do that. I think that's what it was. I feel like that's what it was anyway. That one of the demos at the title screen was spinning into the rocks. Your measly rocks. Aren't strong enough to deal with Crash of Spin. Crash of Spin is OP. Mate, you know. Don't have to worry about the TNT that are only falling. Where did they even come from? I don't know. Of course, this is like the last time we see Koala Kong until Crash Bash. But this is the only time we see him in Naughty Dog's games because uh, it was Eurocom, Eurocom Software, I believe, for Crash Bash. So they brought him back in that. Probably because they just needed numbers. I mean, you're making a party game, and uh, you need to make up the numbers. But yeah, you only see Koala Kong one. I mean, I think the main reason is because he kind of just got replaced by Tiny. We've only, we only really, we don't really need more than one, like I guess, strong beast, beastie type character. So it's like, yeah, Tiny got Tiny's there. So Koala Kong got replaced by him. Now we're on Island 3, and it's heavy machinery. That kind of uh, rhymed. <laughs> Again, um, I don't find this level really that hard. They give you an Aku Aku mask here, and uh, if you drop down in this next section, you can get another one, but I decided not to. I just decided to carry on. Uh, yeah, down there, between those uh, robot things there, you can uh, get another one if you like. And this one's obviously got the, uh, the Embryo a bonus stage. I actually, in one of my runs, I actually got to the uh, the time I'm going to stage by accident. I've been trying to avoid them because I don't need to do them. So, I was like, oh, oops. <laughs> but I don't find this or Castle Machinery really that difficult. Um, I actually quite enjoyed the levels, actually. They got obstacles. Oh, I was being a bit ballsy there. <laughs> I was like, screw the platform. <laughs> I was going to go around there. Yeah, that's the sort of thing you do in a speed run. Saved you a bit of time. Although I want to say in Castle Machinery, I missed my timing. I don't think it was the Heavy Machinery. I think it was Castle Machinery. I missed my timing on something and I got really annoyed. I don't know what I'm doing here. Maybe I had an itchy nose. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe I had ants in my pants. Uh, a bit too much information there. <laughs> yeah, those, those, the, oh, that was, okay. <laughs> I was probably annoyed about that. I'm annoyed just looking at that. I don't know what happened there. I guess I was just a bit slow, or like my timing was off. It seemed like I was spinning, and I should have hit the the camera, the, the robot camera. Oh well. Good job, I had an Aku Aku then. I think there were some close calls in this. We should get enough one. Yeah, there we go, right there. Another one. Don't need to bother with that. Oh, this one's easy. Yeah, it just goes in a row, so... I was to actually get the green gem in Lost City just to uh, take the, the shortcut to the end and cast some machinery. But it require me to get all the boxes, but uh, yeah, I tend to do that. <laughs> just to uh, get all the lives and be like, yeah. But then I felt like, well, nah, I should I should just do the level normally, so what's the point? 
Let's not waste time. Let's just do it. And we're just about to wrap up uh, Heavy Machinery, and then we're on to Cortex Power, I believe. Yep, it's time for Cortex Power, so let's get into this. Not so bad when you're like twenty percent, I'll say that. As long as you know where to go, uh, just go straight in. Again, they kind of throw Aku Aku Mask at you so you can get invincibility. And I will say, get invincibility up till the end, because the end is where uh, you have that path of foxes. And obviously, if you uh well, I was going to say obviously, but I think you can jump on it. But it, it's honestly, it's risky. I find it more risky to jump on it because I think there's a bit of delay. When you, when you have Aku Aku, you jump on top of a box. I don't think it breaks immediately. And I get the feeling they did that on purpose in case you did jump on a row of boxes because they do that a few times. Um, and then you might fall. But I think in that situation, I was like, no, I'm not going to risk it because I could jump on it and then immediately fall through. So... Um, it's good to get past like this area right here. Oh, I got hit the last minute, but I still have one mask. That was a bit bull, but oh well. Yeah, here. So I would just, I just jump over it without using the invincibility. So that worked out better in my opinion. I didn't want to risk it. Okay, now it's time for the generator room. Uh, it, this is one of these levels where I didn't rush it, but I've rushed it in the past, like practice rushing, and I've kind of found it easier in, in some circumstances. Yeah, I get round. You, 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 what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to uh, obviously break that crate to make the TNT explode and then jump through, but you can just jump around it if you're confident, if you're feeling confident enough, I suppose. I always found this level kind of creepy. Well, more more so the the cortex face with no N. He has there's no N on his head, because you notice how he always has an N on his head, right? Well, he doesn't have an N in that like I guess pre-recorded camera thing. If in the insane trilogy, it's just a funny clip of him like laughing. It's it's not even scary. It's just funny. But I personally kind of liked the whole. Intimidation thing. Granted, the real cortex isn't really that intimidating, but I don't know what it is about it. Just the way he looks on that camera, like he's not even doing anything. He's just like gyrating and back and forth. He just looks like he has a dead serious face on him. And I say it's just I don't know what it is. It's odd that there's just no N on his on his head. I don't know if they made a mistake there or something, but it's just like why does he not have an N on his head? That's odd. Is it not Cortex? <gasps> Who is it? <laughs> it's my uncle. I don't know. <laughs> and then plus like the, the, the music. I always felt kind of creepy. And you got like this dark smoke. I guess it's just like toxic. Toxic smoke. Because we're about to end into toxic waste soon. So. And we, we're in the. We're in the uh, forbidden bit of the factory. We shouldn't be in. You know. And that, uh, that motor is on something man. Look at, look, look at that. Look at that. Look at that face though, look at those glowing eyes. It just looks really dodgy. Why, what is the point of that? Why are there monitors with his face on? I understand if he was watching, but I don't think he is. I don't think he is. And that looks like a, just like a pre-screen thing, so I don't really know. <laughs> I know he loves himself because he puts N on everything, but you know. Mind you, it could be Nitrous Brio. I've said that before, it could be Nitrous Brio, not actually Neo Cortex. So. <laughs> Pinstripe! Oh yeah, we're about to deal with him, aren't we? Is he next? No, 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 It is, I'm pretty certain it is Toxic Waste because we deal with his goons before we fight Pinstripe.
Yeah, here we go. Toxic waste. The only thing that gave me trouble back in the day, and honestly, still sometimes give me trouble, is the bouncing barrels. You have the best thing to do is to jump around them. Um, honestly, what have I got? you have to be confident enough to jump around them and back onto the platforms. The little ones are fine. Yeah, I'm, I just, I just don't care. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! oh. <laughs> Screw you! I got him, boss. I got him. No. no. It's coming for me. <laughs> it's just coming straight through. It's a shame we don't just explode the barrels with Aku Aku, but our last fight, I guess. Destruction everywhere you go. What I'll say, is it this run that I almost died in this? No, I don't think it was. But there it is. It's about, I don't know why that one bounces. I don't know, but it does. <laughs> you can hide here for that one, but the rest, no. Cause I think is it the next one? I think it's the next one. That was the final one where he just throws nothing but them. So it's kind of like, oh, okay, challenge accepted. Now you can hide to the right here. I think I get hit, don't I? Yeah, I did. I missed time myself. Luckily, I had an Akaraku there. Ooh. Yeah, that was. Ooh. There we go. Ooh, I timed that correctly. I just stood there, bounced it over my head. Yeah, that was good timing. Nice. Alright, time for pinstripe. Again, not that difficult. You can even catch him in a uh, bit of a cycle if you're quick enough. Unfortunately, I wasn't quite quick enough, but I'm about to kind of show you what I was trying to go for. Right after he finishes right here, if you spin him, and if you're quick enough and spin him again... Well, I didn't quite do it there, but... Yeah, that's close enough. I think you can get him four times. I think that's the max. Uh, or it could be wrong, you might be able to finish him like in one cycle, but yeah, if you're quick enough, you can get him four times, I think, and then he only takes one hit, so it just kind of, it's just a faster way to, to get through him. It's not hard, obviously, and it's just a quick way of doing it. But it just means here I'll have to uh, hit him a couple of more times. But it's, it's still a bit faster, so. Of course you got the, uh, the Cortex painting, and then him on the left, the old pinstripe. Crazy guy. Love him with machine gun. Look at him with his suit on the left there, the black suit. He's like... Where they have my talk on? <laughs> Alright, the high road. I hear people have struggled with this, so... Um, let's see how we let's see how I do here. I can't remember if I had too much trouble with this. I want to say no, honestly. I want to say uh, Rotenewe gave me more trouble. Ooh, that seemed a little bit too close. Like that hog was sniffing me. That's how close it was. It was like with his nose, man. It was like close. So screw that tail. <laughs> we don't need it. <laughs> In this situation, we actually don't. Um, you know. You do need it later on, but in, in some of these cases, you can actually just run and jump. Uh, but I do expect you to use it um, and use them, it's implied, so. Like, I think you have to use it here. I, I, I don't know, you might be able to make it without jumping on the ropes, I mean, of course. Yeah, I can make that jump, so. But yeah, like here, obviously, you have to use the turtle because that turtle's levitating. I say levitating because if you stand on those things, it immediately goes through the ground. So why is that turtle not heavy enough? That, <laughs> what is this nonsense? Crash is just fat, I guess. <laughs> Crash confirmed fat. I don't know. <laughs> Spin that dude. Oh, this one's a bit awkward, it looks like. it. Oh, okay, not too bad, not too bad, not too bad. You got the wooden planks. They don't fall, luckily. So. Nice. Yeah, I don't know. I, ne I never really found this too bad compared to Road to Nowhere. Um, honestly. Because you, you, know, you just may just go jump on the turtles, you're good. There you go. 
boop, and I just skip the second one because you can just do that, man. You can just hold the X button to get a higher jump, and just completely skip it, and I find that a lot easier, man. So I say in this case, I'm kind of like speed running a little bit. You know, I'm rushing through it in a way. Yeah, like so, you just like do that. So a good way is to like look at the shadow to to kind of aim at where you're landing. It's a good way. It's what I do. I look at the shadow. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna land here so I can just adjust myself accordingly. And that was it. Yeah, like I didn't honestly find that uh, too bad uh, from what I remember. And just looking at it, I was like, yeah, no, it's okay. Silver so Climb, however, is a different beast altogether. Now I did beat the Insane Trilogy's um, recreation of uh, Stormy Ascent, and I did the Platinum. It took me several times, but I did it. And honestly, compared to that, Slippery Climb is nothing. <laughs> now that I've played Stormy Ascent, because I never, I never played the uh, the unused level, because uh, I didn't like have a mod or hack the game or anything. I never played it, um, so it was the first time I did it. And as far as I know, it's a pretty good re recreation. It's hard, like you'd expect, and there's a reason why I wasn't included, officially anyway. It was clearly a level they they meant to remove from the game. But they didn't, they left the data in, so people found ways to unlock the level. Um, but it crashes the game when you try to beat it. Like, when you get to the end, it just crashes. But, yeah. I believe it was shown on, like, one of the uh, awesome games on Quick. It's either Awesome or Summers or Winners, one of the two. You know what I'm saying. One of the uh, Done Quick games uh, events. That's where, that's where I saw one of them, one of the persons do it. There we go. So this is still difficult. There's clearly a lot of timing involved. There's a lot of spikes everywhere. Bottoms, pits, platforms going at different times. You have to jump on these giant ass birds. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like after playing so much Stormy Ascent that this isn't as bad, and it's kind of weird to say because I used to always say about Slippery Climb is like one of the hardest levels, and honestly, I still think it is. I just, I guess, I've gotten a high toler to toleration for it now. I've played Stormy Ascent. This just seems like nothing compared to it. You know, it really isn't. It's like Stormy Ascent is a whole new beast, man. A whole new beast. And uh, in case anyone interested, uh, I actually did a platinum run for the entire Crash Bandicoot Entertainment Trilogy, including Stormy SM and this game. So I did that. I know someone was in the chat before in my in in my first attempt at doing this in his live stream, and they, and they were like, "How did you do it?" And I'm like, "I don't know, man. I just did. Okay, I I, I surprised even myself. <laughs> I don't know how I did. I just did it." <laughs> someone was guiding my hand. This guy is not too bad. His uh, his arc is very very like low. He doesn't throw very far. Oh, that that seemed awkward the way I jumped there. Yeah. Well, I just made it. I was a bit nervous coming coming like around this area, I believe. Um, well, all we have to do is just well, all, all you're doing is jumping on birds and platforms because the platforms are obviously rotating. There's a bit of timing towards it. You got the grabby hands. They just want to be free. Maybe. I don't know. We got an Akuaku and an embryo head. An embryo head. We a decapitated embryo head. Yeah. And screw Tana. <laughs> she left us anyway for pinstripe. There we go. Very nice. And the last stretch. <laughs> I was like, I didn't take him out. I was so close. Just for good measures, I'll get the lives. And boom! Slippery Clive, no death. All right, now, a breather level, in my opinion, lights out. So I don't think this is nearly as bad. Again, a level that in places I will rush. Depends. When when you come across those orange platforms, then I don't rush, because obviously you have to wait for them to come towards you. But considering 
your light source is Aku Aku, they kind of expect you to just keep going anyway because otherwise it's going to be pitch black. Now, I think someone has done this pitch black, like you know, without a mask. And shout outs to, the, the, to that person, or I'm sure more than one person. Shout outs to anyone who's tried this and done it without the light source, whether it's this game or the Tain Trilogy version. Well done, well done. To me, that's just like, oh hey, that's, um, that's, uh, whatchamacallit. Like, memory of the layout, I guess. Uh, I want, there is a little bit of light source. A little bit in places. In places. But then, like, you see where the rats are, and it's, it's pretty much pitch black. So I, I, feel, I think, like, where the Aku Aku boxes are, there's light. Where there would be boxes, there's a little bit of light source. Um, so you can make, make that out, but... Now, if I was doing the uh, the other lights out level, it would be a bit more difficult. But yeah, I just I just don't care about these these things. <laughs> just going for it. Just seems to be easier just to kind of rush through. Mainly, mainly anyway. Wait for that one. Screw the rats. There we go. Nothing to it. Look at that. Done. Only four boxes. Hmm. All right, it's time for Jaws of Darkness. I guess the uh, the other version of uh, Temple Runes. I guess a bit harder, but it's the same type of thing. Like everything you've pretty much seen here is like what you're going to see here. You know, what you're going to see in this level as well. So, oh yeah, I think I remember. The t I got the timing kind of awkward here with the flames. So I was like, when do I go? I just decided to go for it. We're all right. I made it. It's all good. Wait for that platform to pop up. There we go. I remember at this level, if you if you uh, get the blue gem, they they give you just a bunch of Aku Aku, so you can get invisibility very easily. Uh, but in this case, that's not the case because I uh, didn't get the blue gem. So I got a question for you guys. I probably asked this before, but you never know. You get new people that pop in. They might not have seen my live streams. What is the hardest level in this game for you? What's what is the hardest level? What is the level they give you the most difficulty? Whether it be back in the nineties, where or whenever you played it. You know, you might be a new person to Crash. You may have only experienced this via the Insane Trilogy. I don't know, or you may have played the original game much later on. Um, whenever, like, what's your hardest level? you found. I want to say it was probably Slippery Climb. This level isn't actually too short, so we're actually, I believe, almost done. Yeah, we're right at the end, look at that. At least when you're not going to 100%, it's really not that long.
Anyway, now we're heading to Castle Machinery. I think it's here when I get my timing off. Yeah, I was really annoyed. I was, I was like, I thought I timed that right. But it is what it is. I remember, I was just like, oh, are you serious? Like, whatever. <laughs> I guess that's a good job of God, like a good mask, man. That could have been it. That could have been it. Could have been the end of the run. I never really found these levels too hard. Even the 100 really wasn't really too bad. They, you do have that one section with the uh, the boxes we have to bounce on. A little tricky, like get like getting all of them and making it back. Uh, but you know, once you've done it once or twice, you sort of figured out a good pattern for doing it. It's it's fine. You could also get invisibility here as well if you manage to keep your mask. I believe they give you a few masks here. I don't get that though. So I'm a little too hasty like so. Time that correctly. <laughs> a little too hasty for my own good. And I lost the mask. Aku, Aku, Aku is the PvP man. He's, sa he's saving this run. He is saving this run. <laughs> don't know what I'd do about him. Because I'd be screwed. Not you know Wampers. I need one more for a life. Sorry, apples. <laughs> oh man, makes me laugh when people used to call them apples. To be honest, I probably when I first played the game when I was a kid and I didn't pay attention to the to the manual or anything. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I probably did think I think it's apples, and then I like read that it was actually not apples. It was one of those because I used to love reading the instruction manuals for like the Mega Drive and the PlayStation. I kind of missed them. Like, they're a lot more chunkier and a lot more meatier. Um, now, they're just they're non-existent. Or, they say, if you want to look at the manual, go online. I'm like, uh, I kind of prefer the books. They're like the only books I would read. <laughs> uh, hilarious. But, no, I, I, I kind of, I feel like, you know, I'm trying to feel a bit nostalgic. Like, I, I kind of miss, I miss them, man. I really do. Like, I'm not going to lie. Uh, which which I think is a thing. I think there is a Sonic Mania manual that you can get or Well, I'm not sure if you can get it might be like exclusive, but I think there was an actual Sonic Mania menu, uh, Like manual that maybe some people got or something or maybe any devs got I don't know but I was like, oh man, that would be cool to get You know like a, a Mega Drive type type of thing mm -hmm. Sega Mega Drive type uh, manual um, I believe, I think they created a a PS1 styled Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy case, but I heard it was only for Debs or something. Um, I saw it on Twitter. Uh, it was basically just Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, but in a PS like you know the cover on the PS1 case. It was cool. I was like, oh, that would be cool, like a a thing to give to fans or something if they like pay for, of course, or whatever, you know. But if it's just the case, I mean, how much would you charge for? I don't know. Well, I'd, I'd assume you'd get the game, but it would just be the, you know, be the PS4 game inside there, PS1. That'd be cool. That'd be neat. Anyway, we're fighting Dr. Nitrous Brio. You can't tell because I already knocked some of his health bar away, including his name. Of course, he likes the Hulk out. He's really not that hard. But I always thought Brio was a cool character. I may even go to say more cool than... Like, I kind of liked him more a scientist as opposed to uh, Cortex, I want to say. Uh, so, I was all about helping him in Crash Bandicoot 2. Gather the gems, not the crystals. I hear you. And here's the last technically official level in the game. The lab. Pretty, this is arguably again one of the most trickiest. I would arguably say this might be the second hardest level for Platinum in Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy because Stormy Ascent, hands down, I think is the hardest. But this is pretty up there. Um, you have to get the timing, for getting the Platinum, I'm saying. Not just for doing the time trial in general, getting the Platinum. The timing is insane. You have to get with those, like, the electrical barrier things right there. Like, my god. 
man, I wasted so much time doing that. But, you know, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I did it, you know. I'm always up for a challenge in a video game, and I'm gl I glad I, I platinum Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, honestly. <coughs> despite, despite not really liking the, like, not thinking that the platinum should really be a thing. Oh god, okay, I messed up there. Um, within the game. I did it, regardless. I'm just glad I beat it. But since then, I don't think I've played it. <laughs> I think, you know, I played the I played the crap out of it and just... I spent so many hours just practicing and practicing and practicing that I was like, you know what? I actually don't want to play it <laughs> for quite a bit because, you know, I've played so much of it. So, can you blame me? I've played so much of it, man. I'll probably do the same with Spyro when he gets this remaster. This time, this is tricky. You can either, you can run around, you can actually, well, run around, you can jump around the lab assistants, or you can spin into them. Um, it's trying to get the timing down with the electrical barrier and that, dude, but we managed to do it. Luckily. I was trying to be safe here. But after this, we just got the hall, and technically, you can still die, you just fall. <laughs> but you, if you, as long as you can jump over and get to the, uh, the exit, you're good. Just one jump. And then it's Cortex. I mean, you can still die from Cortex, but he's he's not as like bad as the Insane Trilogy. When I say bad, I just mean like the hitboxes is weird in the Insane Trilogy. The hitboxes in general is just weird in that game. It really is. Boom! There we go. As far as I'm concerned, that's that's a win. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> just to deal with Cortex, and he's really not that big of a deal. So. Plus, I think they give you masks, don't they, so... And that was the Great Hall. So, yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's do this. Let's finish this run and beat Dr. Neo Cortex. And the final hit, boom! Oh yeah, I think that deserves a celebration crash. There you have it, Tana is there giving him a big hug. We saved. Uh, I don't know what I was going to say there. <laughs> we did it anyway, we, we beat Crash Bandicoot. No deaths. No devs at all in one sitting. It's kind of a shame I couldn't do this in a live stream. I really wanted to, but I mean, I'm just kind of glad I did it and I've recorded it. It's like, here you go. <laughs> Whether you believe it or not, because I could have edited, I suppose, but no, no. I, I'm, I, I was really happy I, I just got it done, really, because I, I want to do it, um, you know, so that was great. Anyway, there's not really much more to say. Um, if you enjoyed this, be sure to hit the like button, guys. I really appreciate it. Subscribe if you are new for more runs like this. And again, if you want to suggest any challenge ideas, hashtag GBUK Wednesdays. I'll see you guys next time.